Theaters are a unique uh, typology in architecture. We see the, the light fountains, uh, which are, I think, a wonder. I, I love that term, the light fountains. Even the colors that we see, the, the pink and the, the blue, were very much a part of that Art Deco uh, color scheme. Stepping out into the night and uh, going to a show uh, and, and walking into a space that is uh, uh, different and decorative and a little flashy and a little uh, sparkly can, uh, can start to stir our imaginations. And there's something about the movies, man, you can just escape. Um, whether that's escaping to a whole new world or into an artist's vision or into a character that just draws you in. You know, we can, we can stream stuff on Netflix and, 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 and that's wonderful. Um, but there's nothing like going out to a cinema um, and seeing a movie on the big screen with an audience. And you get that, um, well, what we call the collective cathartic experience. Um, so you're laughing together. If it's a horror film, you're screaming together. You're going on these journeys together. Even though the people in the auditorium are probably strangers to you, you get to share that. wanted an additional space. In fact, we designed an additional space. It was always, you know, a dream in the middle of my head and, and for all of us, all of the board members. Um, uh, the film festival, the need for a second screen, screen drove it. But most importantly of all, um, in order to book film, uh, you had to sign sort of ironclad agreements with the film distributor that you would show that film every single solitary night, you know, some, and on the weekends they had specific requirements for how often you showed it. Um, and they meant business, believe me. And so I came back to Doug and to Kilborn Group and said, is there any room for us in the 300 Broadway space? And so that's how we ended up here. Uh, I was asked to uh, assist in the development of the new theater. and the, We wanted something that was uh, uh, nice, something that was a little bit upscale from the, the normal uh, chain movie theater uh, experience. And the other big controversy we had was the ceiling. You know, I came in and there was just this really ugly ceiling in here, really, you know, the whatever. Anyway, so I thought, wow, you know, that doesn't look like the original theater at all. And so the architect came up with this design, which I absolutely love. It's very evocative, very reminiscent, you know, of the, of the original theater. So you come in here and it's just this little jewel-like space that feels like the original theater. It was all part of trying to provide an homage to the, the old theater while looking boldly ahead into the future, which uh, we, we thought poetically represented Fargo in many ways, uh, and the Fargo Theater itself, as an icon, but also as, as a vision of what we can do together. Theater 2 has been a gift to our organization. It's been incredible. Um, the amount of growth we've been able to achieve um, by simply adding a second auditorium has been extraordinary. Theater One is 870 seats and it's this you know, enormous um, uh, space um, that's great for large crowds and large events. Um, but now we have this second space that's so great for, for smaller things like children's birthday parties or corporate events. The Fargo Theatre, uh, as it is, uh, uh, even as it was, uh, is a, uh, a manifestation of somebody's vision. I think that buildings um, have spirits and I think they want to be something and I truly feel that about the Fargo Theatre. It wants to be this theatre, it wants to bring this unique capacity to the community. Um, it houses generations of, of entertainment memories, and it wants to be a theater. I'm grateful to live in a community that values the preservation of historic facilities, um, you know, that this place remains and is supported um, so generously. We're lucky to have people like that in this community, and, uh, and we know that here, so.